All right, everybody, welcome back. We are going to do a deep dive today. and uh, Looking forward to it. Yeah, this should be interesting. We're going to be looking at digital currencies and uh, you know their potential to really become part of our everyday lives. Yeah. You know, like how do we get to the point where we can use these things seamlessly for our everyday transactions? Right. Uh, you know, for things like grabbing a coffee or paying our bills or even shopping online. Like, is that going to actually happen with digital currency? Yeah. Is it all hype? Right. And that's what we're going to find out. So the, the the source that we're looking at today is a YouTube video by Shopping Compass. Okay. It's called uh, Yem Basic Knowledge, One Requirements for Daily Use of a Digital Currency. Okay. So, um, you know, we all want to know, like, what does it really take for a digital currency to actually work seamlessly in our everyday life? Like I said, paying for things online or in person, just using digital currencies. Right. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of skepticism about cryptocurrencies out there, right? Like a lot, a lot of them haven't really lived up to the hype. Yeah, for sure. So is there one that actually works? Yeah. That's what we're going to find out. This video outlines seven key requirements for a digital currency to be viable for everyday use. Okay. And we're going to go through those one by one. But before we do that, I just want to say that, you know, it's a pretty tall order for a digital currency to meet all these requirements. Right. It's a lot to ask. Yeah. So uh, let's get started. The first requirement is legal compliance. Okay. So this means that the digital currency needs to be recognized by major financial authorities around the world, like countries, you know, the mm -hmm. EU, the USA, yeah. like the big players. Yeah, it has to be legitimate, basically. Exactly. It has to be legal. Right. Uh, the second requirement is stability. Okay. So nobody wants to use a currency that's like on a roller coaster ride. Of course not. It needs to hold its value, and it can't be subject to manipulation by like big investors who can just pump and dump the price. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, nobody wants to get caught up in that. Exactly. So stability is key. Definitely. All right. So the third requirement is easy access. So if I want to use a digital currency, I need a straightforward way to buy it. Right. You need to be able to get your hands on it. Exactly. Like I don't want to have to jump through a bunch of hoops just to get some of this currency. Yeah. It needs to be simple. And then the fourth requirement is a secure digital wallet. Makes sense. Yeah, so this is where you're going to store and manage your coins. Right, your digital piggy bank. Exactly. And it needs to be secure because you, you don't want your coins getting stolen. Of course not. Security is paramount. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so the fifth requirement is blockchain technology. Right. So this is the underlying technology that powers most cryptocurrencies. Yeah, it's what makes them secure and transparent. Exactly. Yeah. And it's essential for making sure that transactions are secure and transparent. We definitely. Okay. The sixth requirement is a user-friendly app. Okay. So, you know, we need something that makes it easy to pay with this digital currency, both online and in physical stores. Right. It needs to be convenient. Exactly. And finally, the seventh requirement is speed, security, affordability, and ease of use. Yeah. That's a lot all rolled into one. I know, right? <laughs> but these are all essential for a digital currency to be successful in the real world. Mm. It needs to be fast, secure, affordable and easy to use absolutely no compromises there exactly so those are the seven requirements mm -hmm. now the question is does such a thing even exist yeah. right like are we talking about a digital unicorn here yeah does a cryptocurrency that checks all these boxes actually exist well that's where your everyday money or yem enters the picture yem yeah yem okay i'm listening so yem claims to meet all seven of those requirements wow all right tell me more so Yem was launched in 2017 by the Unicorn Network, which is a global community with over 3,700 members. Okay. And they had a successful initial coin offering, or ICO, which is basically a crowdfunding campaign where people can buy early access to the currency. And this helped them raise capital and build an initial community. But what sets Yem apart is that they transferred it to a democratically elected nonprofit organization. Hold on. Democratically elected nonprofit for a currency. That's pretty unique. It is. Most cryptocurrencies are, you know, very independent from those kinds of traditional systems. Right. Isn't that kind of a risky move? Well, it's definitely a different approach. But by handing over control to a nonprofit, mm -hmm. Yem 
is aiming to avoid the volatility that we see with some other cryptocurrencies. Okay, I see. Remember how we talked about big investors manipulating the price? Yeah. That's less likely when you have a decentralized, democratically governed system. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So what about the legal and tax side of things? Like, yeah. How does YEM fit into our current system? It's a really important question. And it kind of brings us to why Bitcoin, despite its popularity, hasn't really become an everyday payment method. Okay. A lot of cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, aren't legally recognized as currencies in a lot of places. And plus, Bitcoin's value can fluctuate wildly, so it's really hard to pin down its exact worth for tax purposes. Yeah, that's got to be a headache for everybody involved. Oh, absolutely. So Yem is trying to address these challenges head on. Okay. So how do they do that? Well, unlike Bitcoin's energy-intensive proof-of-work system, YEM uses a proof-of-participation model. Okay. So this no. means that users are rewarded for simply holding and using the currency. Mm, interesting. So this encourages stability rather than speculation. And it's also designed to be tax-friendly and compliant with regulations. So it's more palatable for governments and businesses. Oh, okay. I see. And in this video, they even talk about being free from the conservative banking system. Right. What does that even mean in practice? Well, it's a bold statement for sure. I wouldn't say that YEM is completely replacing the banking system. Okay. But they do envision a future where you're less reliant on traditional financial institutions. Mm -hmm. Think about it this way. With YEM, you could potentially pay your bills, buy goods and services, and even send money internationally, all without needing a bank account. That's a big claim. But, you know, the cynic in me kind of wonders if that's really realistic. Like, is that actually achievable? That's a good question. Could YEM or another digital currency really become the future of finance? It's certainly a possibility. I mean, we're still in the early stages. Right. But YEM's approach with its focus on stability, legal compliance, and ease of use is definitely intriguing. Yeah. yeah. Whether it reshapes the financial landscape, you know, that remains to be seen. Right. But it's definitely a conversation worth having. Absolutely. Well, this has been a fascinating deep dive today. It has. Exploring the potential of digital currencies to become part of our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. And we learned a lot about YEM. We did. But remember, this deep dive is just the starting point. Always do your own research and critical thinking before making any financial decisions. The future of finance is being written right now. That's right. And it's up to all of us to stay informed and engaged. Couldn't agree more. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks everyone. And we'll see you next time. See ya.